I'm Dr. Gavin Svensson, Curator and Head of Invertebrate Zoology here at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. And new research on a really charismatic group of praying mantises called the horned mantises, the Vatini, that live in Central and South America, evolved camouflage in a very interesting way. Most uh, praying mantises exhibit some form of camouflage. Most people think of a, of a camouflage as being the coloration for an insect to blend in with the background. But there's another kind of camouflage called disruptive camouflage, where species will actually evolve features that go outside the normal profile of their body, such as a, a long process on the head or a lobe on the leg that makes uh, the profile more difficult for a predator to detect the organism. And some praying mantises have evolved these features, and especially within the group that we're looking at now, uh, they've evolved these features in, in two separate occasions. So during the origins of the horned mantises, we see the evolution of these small leg lobes on the middle and hind legs of the species. And one lineage, half of the diversity of this group, started investing in this disruptive camouflage by gaining numerous other characteristics that also disrupt the profile of the species within that group. However, half of the diversity lost these leg lobes and relied only on coloration to blend in with the background. But then much, much later in the evolution of that group, we see the re-evolution of these leg lobes and then the reinvestment of uh, uh, camouflage within that lineage. And it demonstrates that we could have the evolution of camouflage happening independently through similar pathways on two separate occasions. Uh, and the fact that two separate lineages invested so heavily in disruptive camouflage suggests that it was some sort of evolutionary advantage within the group and might have helped their survival. The specimens that we used for this research were collected by our lab group as well as gathered from a number of collections in the United States and Europe. And we really have to gather a lot of material because we need to study variability across different species and different distributions. When we started this research, we were focused uh, primarily on revising the classification for the group. And we used molecular, which is DNA sequence data, and formalized morphological analysis, where we take uh, observations on their external features and we code them in a formal uh, analytical framework. And our goals were to fix the classification because it didn't align with evolutionary history. Um, and that led to the creation of a new genus for a very beautiful uh, species from Central and South America uh, called Elangularis. And the name actually means angled wings. And the female has a, a green pinkish hue to the wings. And it's quite striking. And we also created a new tribe uh, named for the type genus within that group. And what this really does is it allows for easier identification and more accurate uh, boundaries drawn between these groups. And when we have this more accurate boundaries and classification system, we can study comparative biology in, in a more realistic fashion. Having a classification system aligned with evolutionary history allows you to study other aspects about their biology and their origins. So if we didn't have things properly related to each other, it would be very difficult to make evolutionary comparisons between this species that has camouflage and that species that doesn't have a camouflage.